so I was I was doing the Greenpeace podcast. Yeah. I was just running up the episode. And I went on to do the um, just to find some stories mm. as I would do for, you know, part one. Yeah. And it was um, American election. Who, mm. uh, who are the leaders and candidates yeah. for for environmentalism? Yeah. I think it, it had ma- massive candidates early in the year. And then yeah. it just whittled yeah. down after we... After we've got to, mm. you know, the two big runners, Biden yeah. and Trump. Mm. And it was... Here's an environmental... Here's a Greenpeace environmental score. Yeah. For each of the candidates. Mm. And Biden was like 75.5 out of 100. Okay. Because he supported a Green New Deal. Yep. And he supported not using fossil fuels. And no fracking. Yeah. And it's it a huge spiel. He's back, it, he's back it, up on that And one. at the very bottom, it goes, praise, thumbs up, and then thumbs down was shame. Okay. So I think if you click on those, it'll create a Facebook sort of hyperlink. Sure. And then you can post onto your Facebook site mm-hmm. and then they would pop up and say, I support blah, 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 this person or I shame this person. Okay. Donald Trump. Right. Zero out of a hundred. And it was like, you know, two lines like, you know, he doesn't support the Green New Deal. He yeah. doesn't support that. So who, who wants to support the Green New Deal? This is, anyway, this, but this is Greenpeace's website. Yeah. This is very one-dimensional examination on mm. candidates. Because Absolutely. you don't just look at environmentalism. You also look at, at say, the people side, the yeah. economy, the yeah. health. Well the, well, the issue is the same, that same, the same thing is happening on the right, where the right have got factions, loud factions, that are one-issue voters. Going, are you going to build the wall? Or are you going to dismantle Roe v. Wade? Or are you going to repeal gay marriage? And that's their one thing they're focused on. So they're doing the same sort of problem. So people are driven into these camps of, are, are you pro-X? Are you pro-Y? If you are pro-X, then you are a bad person. If you are pro-Y, you're a good person. Yeah, so now it's now, because I disagree with how you want to select your candidate, mm. you fall into a good and bad, evil camp. It's now yeah. black and white, which... There's no way to examine the kind of stuff. And, you know, I found it interesting. I'm going to put it into the next episode yeah. podcast. Because it's like, really? Zero out of 100. Okay, I can see there's something behind it. Like a little yeah. agenda. Yeah. What I do here in Australia has nothing to do in America. But I feel like in today's world, in Australian culture, is that we are single issue voters. Yeah. Well, I've, I've heard it said. I kind of agree with... The, I do kind of agree with the idea that Australia is around between five and ten years behind america so what happens in america culturally politically socially it starts to filter through not not everything filters through some stuff stays over there but stuff starts to filter across and it takes about five to ten years for that to happen but it's getting faster but it does reflect it's a reflection point of how influential america actually is as a nation and that it has that that uh, cultural reach into other countries across literally on the other side of the world yeah but anyway anyway we can next now week. start sounds good back with myself uh johnny and pat how you going yeah doing all right doing all right all right cool so this is from uh, huffington post and it's about the dating app problems so six common complaints that uh, marriage therapists and relationships and dating coaches hear about dating apps from their single clients so clients who are seeking a relationship so number one being on a dating app feels like a part-time job it is tiring. It's fatiguing. Number two, we started chatting and then there was radio silence. So there's this ghosting thing. Like, you know, they suddenly just drop off the radar. Number three, I'm matching with the wrong type of person. So there's an expectation. There's a portrayal. Something's not matching up there. Four, first dates feel like interviews and <laughs> no one lives up to their profile or my expectations. Mm. Number five, 
Online dating feels too superficial. Number six, I'm totally out of decent matches. <laughs> All right, so Pat. So I've run out, run out of our swipe left and rights. <laughs> you have, we have ran out people in the in the area. What what is what is your thoughts? Are, do you think these are realistic complaints? Are there is it too? Do you think there's more than six? So there's less than six. Mm, I think I think it, I think it differs between person to person. I've I've used online dating, yeah. and some of those some of those six do match up with my experience, especially the uh, starting a conversation with someone and then. There's always a t- there's always a pause where you send the message and you have to wait, wait one day, two day, three day. Going, are we going to get a response back? And you'll get a response, and you'll go, okay, this is this is promising. Let's start the conversation, and you shoot another message back, and it's one day, two day, you get a response back. Okay, cool. We'll start. We've got the conversation rolling now. Let's ask some questions, and then nothing, and it just disappears, and you're you're left in the lurch because you're going, okay, do I? If I, have I said something wrong? Um, ha, I'm not. Have I not understood this whole online dating thing? What do you do? Yeah. So that sounds like number two. Yeah, it does. So, <laughs> which one of these? Like, do you think number two is what you most relate to, or is there any of the other ones? Um, pro- no, pro- pro- probably number two is the my my, my personal experience at least. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm. Can you uh, can you share maybe one of your worst stories? Oh, I, I, I would I would say I do I don't have any any juicy horror stories of the online dating world, but it, but the idea of starting a conversation up with someone and then I think maybe spending max a week talking back and forth, sending them a couple of message, um, messages, and then they just disappear. Uh, yeah, so I send a bunch of messages back and forth uh, over a couple of days, and then thinking, okay, we're getting somewhere, we're getting somewhere, and then they just stop talking. I go send a message back. And they go, oh, I found so I I found someone in the real world. Uh, see you later. Um, it 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 go, online dating is a level of opening yourself to be vulnerable. Yeah, taking taking down the shield and op- and opening yourself up, and then almost having the guts kicked out of you time and time again. I was jumping in and out of online dating, so obviously you pay for the subscription. Yeah, I jump in for a month or two, pull back out, and carry 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 on with life. Every time you face that, every time you face the rejection, you're going, okay, it's kicking the guts. Waste it. Essentially, I have to, have, to start, have to go back to go. Don't collect $200. Don't collect $200. Start again. Mm. Uh, so it can, it can get very, very demoralized when you're going, well, I've tried the real world. I haven't been able to find anyone. So I've resorted to this and it's just as bad. Yeah. <laughs> well, at least you got a response back, you know, like sometimes yeah. you just block you and just disappear. <laughs> exactly. It's like, yeah. Well, maybe I should not say that. <laughs> oh. I found a way to get around that hunch of that, um, that you know, being kicked in the guts kind yep. of feel. And mm. it's just like, you know what? I want to copy and paste and just create a script for myself. <laughs> that works. And therefore, you take emotion out of it. And therefore, mm. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. If you want to treat people like a bot, then I'll treat you like a bot. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. But but the whole per- the whole point of online dating is to try to find a build a meaningful relationship with someone so if you're tr- if you're starting out as treating them like a robot you're going to get a robot back so, so my think is that so you get that superficial relationship is that you sometimes can get too emotionally involved with a person through the text messages mm. it, because if every question you have is carved out uh with them yeah then if they reject you then you the, the bigger the the risk yes. and the big well it's a risk in like you know being vulnerable mm, yeah what's well, how, well, how much how much do you let the shield down yeah like do you drop the shield and go okay i'm open mm. or do you go okay let's lower the shield a little bit and let try to see what happens yeah you get and again you get the same thing in the real world but i think that the problems are exemplified mm. in um in the fact in the uh, virtual world yeah I'm trying to dig deep into those six common complaints yeah. uh, presented by Huffington Post and then trying to find out what is the problem, mm. what is the underlying cause and factors that lead to these problems. And mm. I think, you know what, and I think we've sort of discussed these in our previous episodes of, say, social media, addictiveness, that kind of yeah. the problems over there, is that these apps are designed to give you an endorphin kick. Oh, yeah. Because these things are monetized and they are they want you to keep paying mm. and sometimes you know what it's probably in the best interest for them to keep you on the hook oh, yeah. and keep feeding money 
because the, well, the, the developers or owners of the, of all the different dating apps, you're a customer, you're a paying customer. If they want to continue to exist, they need to have a, um, what would you call it? A, a subscriber base. Yeah. And if those subscribers are getting, are being successful in getting, ma- getting matched with people and they're then leaving the platform, you're losing subscribers. Mm. That's bad for business. The whole app ex- virtual experience has in a sense been hijacked and it's been turned into, okay, we're now in- adding a commercial element into the equation where there wasn't one, well, there wasn't one originally. If you, a couple, quite a few years ago, one of the ways to meet someone would be going to the bar, for example. And there was no commercial component of compulsion to keep you at the bar. The, the, what was it? The, is it bar, barman? No. What's the word? Um, what the guy who the runs guy, the bar? Yeah, well, the guy, the guy um, who's pouring the drinks. What are they called? Yeah, barman. Yeah, is that is that the word? <laughs> I'm, I'm going. Is that it? I'm overthinking it. Anyway, so the, the barman. Yeah. They aren't interested in making sure that you do not leave the bar. They don't. They don't want you. Like, you know what? Can't can, can the analogy? It's, like, <laughs> it's not working. That's all, all right. right. Well, well, okay. Let me try to get that. Is that? Um, these things are addictive and yeah. they, and I guess they, they use the human reply, um, the match, you know, when, when both of you guys match, whoa, that's another endorphin kick. Yes. And that sort of gets you hooked onto this app. Yep. And then, you know what, it's even more scary is, is that if it's a free app mm. that doesn't use subscription, then you're not really the customer there. The customer is the advertising base. Yeah. The ads that come in annoy you all the time. You can't skip. Yeah. I don't even know what they do with the daughter. I think people are just happy to share the daughter. Yeah. yeah. It's just more data. More data for the, for the yeah. virtual profile. Uh, I think one thing uh, is communication. Mm. And I, I talk about how much communication is done between face-to-face, using the telephone, and using email. Mm. And there was, a, there was an old study um, done by Dr. May, Marabian. And his research on nonverbal communication, he comes up with the 738-55 rule, which mm-hmm. is communication is 55% body language, 38% tone, 7% on words. Mm. And so if it's face-to-face, then you can see the body language yeah. of the person. You can see the posture, mm. where they're up, they're down, and you can sort of in- infer a lot of communication through that yeah. uh, face-to-face contact. And on telephone, you can hear, you know, like customer service, they're happy or they're sad, yeah. uh, they're tired. The tone of voice. Yeah, you can hear that. Now, because dating apps are primarily through text message communication, yeah. then it's a lot of it's now on the words. Yeah. Well, we know that effective communication, you know, if you do it face-to-face, it's only 7% on the words. So the challenge is now that how do you develop this deeper connection with the other person through this uh, app mm. just using text messages yeah. i don't really see how it's feasible it is only effective if you go if you try to eventually move on to yeah. face-to-face yeah uh yeah. It, it, oh. it, it is quite interesting the breaking breaking styles of communication down that way yeah so it's it's interesting so this so so communication yeah let me just open this up so so the seven thirty eight fifty five is does that does it have a name? It's uh, the communication. Was it nonverbal communication? Non verbal communication patterns. Okay. Yeah. So it, so it is interesting these nonverbal communication patterns because I'm looking at this thinking about the workplace because mm. that's establishing working relationships is not the same but it's similar to establishing a romantic relationship in that you're communicating with people to try and learn learn about them and figure out how they work. Um, build up, build up a relationship or rapport with them. I would be interested if you, if you spent time with your direct colleague on your team at your work, and you only communicated with them for a year via email. You couldn't see them, you couldn't talk to them, couldn't talk on the phone. You just knew them via email, and that was how you communicated and did your job. I'd be curious to see after a year how well you know them as a person or how well you work together as a team. Yeah. I, I think, you know, we, we talked about before was that in the lead up was that sometimes office romances blossom. Yeah. Because people are communicating and there's also that non-verbal communication, mm. which sort of gets them connected. Also, also that you're spending, what would it be? Not 
nine hours a day, five days a week. We're working with working alongside them. So yeah. So you so you sort of see their non business side because you sort yeah. of know what they're like and exactly. you're observing them. Exactly. Um, but right. it, but it is interesting. It is interesting. We've essentially taken out. Uh, what is what is this? Is this ninety two, ninety three? We've we've taken out ninety three percent of our communication avenues, forming romantic attachments or relationships, or establishing that with people. We're focusing on that seven percent, that yeah. tiny little sliver. Well, I, I don't think to that establish we, a foundation, we, a firm foundation. Not not everyone would. But I think some people definitely do over rely on these apps. Oh yeah, yeah. To try to get the ducks line and roll, and then they'll consider going out on a date face to face. Yeah. Whereas my attitude is that I think I see it as a tool to meet people, yes. meet up in a safe space in a public, maybe shopping center or yeah. McDonald's or coffee place mm. out in the open. Yeah. And then you can sort of well, see what it is beyond yeah. the the apps. Which, you know, what those photos. I mean, I'm pretty sure that some of them will have filters on them, right? Oh, yeah, of course they will. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've spoken, we've spoken about this with regards to social media, is that what you're doing in social media is you're putting forward this uh, highly... Polished? Pol- yeah, highly polished, highly refined, refined best, best expression of yourself, but it's not you. It's your best qualities or what you think are your best qualities... And none of none of the real, like no one is no one is perfect. We've got our strengths, but we've also got our weaknesses. What you see on on everyone's social media is all your all the good qualities, all the strengths, all the positives, and we've banished all the negatives mm. because negatives are not good. You don't want to, people to see that your uh, all all your faults, all all your faults, what's and all. Yeah. So uh, yeah. So. And I think one of the things that we were talking about last time, I think, was in the how would people fail at finding love was the mm. you know Maslow's mountain, is that we over we over expect you know and demand from these apps yeah. to find our soulmate and yes. to find a person that will self actualize us and give us yes rather rather than fi- rather than finding meaning uh, rather than fi- we were looking for meaning in the other person that they are going to come in and fix all the problems that are within you without realizing I'm a broken person. The person that I'm with or my, my partner is a broken person. Together we are broken people. That's yeah. just how it works. Maybe not broken, maybe like imperfect. Imperfect probably better, broken, yeah. yeah. Broken has a <laughs> broken has a little was it loaded meaning to that it. That is yeah. that is true. That is true. Yeah. And I think you know what? You put that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in trouble later for saying you, that. You, you have the expectation on that and you're treating these apps like, you know, Amazon or eBay. You put in the right search criteria and yeah. boom, that person will come up. And you know what? You can be, you're going to be disappointed. Oh, yeah. There's this consumer mindset. Um, you reduce people to the screen, you know, the size of the screen on the phone or yeah. that photo or you, the you, description. You become, a user, you become a user ID at that point. Yeah. And yeah. you know what? How would you like it if you were, someone else see you as a, you know, consumer product? Of course, of course. You'd be revolted by the idea. But I think we've more easily ad- accepted that especially over the last 10 20 years and that's just become second nature to us now yeah oh, what was that story that um the career so not the career uh that was the the failing at love one was like you know successful was i believe it was a footballer in in, in victoria or something like that and it's like a model model and then they had like a really good kids um really good relationship and then they said a twitter announcement saying we just broke up uh, and why is it? Because we felt like we were growing apart from each other. Okay. It's like you you had this, you know, people would die just to have that kind of relationship. Yeah. Why is it? Oh, we felt we weren't growing together. The failing of that is a host of societal ills. You can look at our Bachelor, Bachelorette TV series, the broken mar- the broken wreckage of marriage of the marriage institution in Hollywood, the trivialization of it. You can you can point to all these problems. I think that online dating is just one more log in the fire of that and i i, I think you're right is that there's there's an aspect of we've we've lost the purpose or the, or the real the the focus of what technology is supposed to do yeah. it's supposed to help enhance our lives in the real world but instead you're right we were we've taken this perfect perfect representation of me and put it on into a screen yeah. is that we've 
taken technology and it has become our world. Mm. And I, I, I emotionally, socially, I don't think that's incredibly healthy. That, that's the problem here. Yeah. I was just going to ask you some of your thoughts about, you know, maybe is this a relationship thing or is this more of the hookup culture? Mm. So, the, you know, the other apps, the more notorious ones, be like, you know, yes, Tinder, and Tinder and and Tinder Bumble and yes. Hinges, all kind of stuff. And it's like, you read the profiles of some of these people and it's yep. like, you must be six foot tall to be, you know, oh, yes. con- considered. Otherwise, swipe left. Yeah. I don't want to see. It's like, <laughs> if you're a guy, um, if you're not six foot tall, don't even bother. It's like, you know what? Can, can I wear, I don't know, stilts or platform shoes? Will that work? <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, I think there's that superficiality attached to it. Oh, yeah. And we've, we've always had, in some ways, it's, it's grown over these, but there's always been this idea of the casual hookup culture in some form or some way. It's probably exponentially grown, especially over the last couple of years. And these, tech- these uh, new ways to connect, such as Tinder and whatnot, have made it easier to, or more visible almost in a way, but it's it's always it's always been there, but it's being held up as a model standard. I'm going, you want to find someone? Use this use this app. We we are more successful than all our competitors. Mm. And you're going, that's not real. It it's superficial. Yeah. So, but, but you think about it, people. Lots of people are using these, using these tools, and you're going, well, they're not even tools. You, they, they're using these these apps, and they're they're, they're not offering anything of real value lo- or long lasting substance. Yeah. So I was trying to dig in. Okay, what's beyond? You know, we talked about some of the issues and problems. What is behind the problem? You know, and I think first of all, it's not a substitute for real life. No. And and I think it was a study that I picked up was um, Jeffrey A. Hall. Mm. How many hours does it take to make a friend uh, f- from 2018? Mm. And they did a study about the university students uh, when they first get into university. And then they tracked the food survey saying, you know, over the semester, how many friends did you make? And then what did you do? And, uh, and how many contact hours there were? And they found that it requires about average 100 hours of contact to form a good impression of these other person. So if you want to make go from acquaintance to casual friend, it's yeah. 50 plus hours. Mm. Casual friend to friend, 100 plus hours. Yeah. Friend to best friend is 200 plus hours. So the quality, there's a, there's a quantity of time attached to it as yeah. well as a quality of time. Mm. And you can't substitute that through text messages yeah. and online dating. Yeah. Uh, so you need to get to meeting that person. And I can understand that the impression is that the world we ha- we live in right now, there's more risk, there's more danger out there. And online dating does offer a bit of a safety net of making sure that the person that you do go and meet, meet face-to-face isn't a threat, isn't dangerous. But at the same token, staying behind, staying behind that shield isn't no i've lost it it's okay. lost it yeah. all right cool that's right uh the other one is uh there needs to be an attitude change um and i think it is it is taking that risk in meeting that person mm. and and so there are some people out there who will use the app and they'll say you know if i want to meet that face to face uh if i want to meet face to face then um from this text messages i need to be absolutely convinced that i got all the information i need mm. And to have all my ducks in a row. Yeah. And what this does is actually contradicts with the science, which is that sometimes we uh, we we get a bad impression from face to face. That there was a quote, I guess, from uh, Dan O'Reilly saying that online dating is a, a singles market greatest failure mm-hmm. because online dating, if you do that, if you use it that way, it is like cookie tasting by reading the ingredients. That's what he said. Right. And there's also too much information. Like we have all these search engines, we put yeah. in all these um, pull down uh, buttons, and uh, and then we can select the criteria. Criteria, yeah, it's actually not a good predictor of rela- good relationships. Yeah. So filtering out these people, because you, you, yeah, you, because you, yeah, you're actually right onto something there. Because what I what you would go in is go, okay, I'm I want to meet a want to meet a girl. She I, she has to be within a certain age range. I want someone who has this color hair this height these interests and you start putting in the filters and you start narrowing down your search parameters 
you might meet someone completely different that you weren't looking for, weren't expecting, like how how it used to happen. Yeah, but there's a market for these uh, filters and the, yeah. and and a search engine function. Oh yeah, and they and the different apps then offer and promote. We have the best filters. We have the best way to narrow your search criteria down to find your perfect uh, soulmate. Mm. But we want a lot of information from these ones, from mm. these apps. Yeah. But we're really bad at analyzing, making good judgment. Yes. After we get the search yeah, results. So, so not so not being able to. Here's an interesting thought. Mm -hmm. um, is having access to all the world's information via Google, has it made us smarter or, shall we say, less adept at critical thinking? Have, we've, we have access to everything now. I think it's, yeah, there's, there's that laziness aside to it. Because yeah. I just, you know, if I just type it in the question in there, then I get the results. Yes. But not analyzing. I'm not applying critical judgment. Critical yeah. judgment, exactly. So discernment. Yeah. So we have this plethora of, ser of these search engine tools to try and find the perfect match for me. But does that actually mean that the person, that the one person that they then find is my perfect match? I think actually the, like no, your dating TV, reality TV programs, they, tr they put that practice, that principle into real life where you have these judges who will, or the producers who will, whittle down the candidates and find and offer you up this is your perfect match and the, and the grand season finale season finale or one now and they then go the relationship lasts two weeks or yeah. two months and it's over oh we did it for the for the tv and the fame exactly and the exactly and again yeah. i've got my own, i've got a whole, whole another podcast can be done on um on the uh the dating relationship reality tv show stuff you could do one for me. <laughs> You're gonna write up an episode of this. <laughs> I could try. I could yeah. give it. I could give it a good shot. Cool. Um, but yeah, a, another another whole episode could be done on on that woeful mess of a mess of a thing. But the same principle is put out where you filter down the person and you go, "This is your perfect match. This is your soulmate." Yeah. Does the relationship last? Not necessarily. A and you know what? I was gonna read it about this bit. It's about. Um... Dataclism. So the guys who developed OK Cupid, mm. it's a guy called Christian Rudder, and he wrote this book. Um, and, and and I'll just read out from the extracts from it. So on January tw January 15, twenty thirteen, OK Cupid declared Love is Blind Day, and removed everyone's profile photos from the site for a few hours. The idea was to do something different and to get a little attention for a new service we were launching at the same time. The program is flipped the switch at nine a.m. Okay. And so the new service, OkCupid, was trying to promote a mobile app called Crazy Blind Date. With, the, with a couple of taps on the screen, it would pair you with a person and select a place nearby and a time in the near future for the two of you to meet. The app provided an interface to let both parties confirm, but there was no way for anyone to directly communicate before the, before okay. the date. So it, it just said, you know, connect you two. Yeah. And you could not do any talking be, at all before be, that. Be here at this time, at this place. Mm. Uh, Crazy Blind Date recorded not only the, the fact that Data A and Data B met in person, but also their opinions of each other. So after each completed date, like a nosy roommate, the app asked oh, how it went. Because most of the users also had OkCupid accounts, we were able to cross-reference this data with all kinds of demographic details. We suddenly had an in-person records to combine with our massive collection of digital interactions. Mm. When you merge the two sources, you find something remarkable. The two people's looks had almost no effect on whether they had a good time, no matter which person was better looking or by how, or by how much, even in cases where one blind dater was a knockout and the other rather homely. The percent of people giving the dates a positive rating was constant. Attractiveness didn't matter. Mm. This data from real dates turned everything I've seen in ten years of running a dating site on its head. Well, yeah. well it, that's actually that, it's an it's an interesting story because one one blocker that gets in the way is that as humans we are visual creatures where we are highly motivated by visual stimuli. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a very govern it's a it's a very key motivator in what drives us to make decisions and motivates us to choose option A or option B. So obviously, it's an interest, It's a very interesting experiment. But but yeah, and, and it's like you have this app 
it has all the signs it has all the filters it has all the percentage matches yeah. or recommend you matches yep and it went you know what let's just do you know random yeah and it just works yeah as well. yeah so so it does, so the, the person who's run who's, who runs the website he's collected all this stuff he knows how to make a high performing pro or, or a successful product yeah and by removing the filters removing the matching and just randomly you that person a person b go person c d go off and just creating those matches it's just as successful it's just and, as and effective knowing that they've got their you know normal dating history and said you know what we could compare that with the random dating one with the crazy blind date it was constant mm. so I'll, I'll finish off what he says is that dating sites are designed to give people the tools and information to get whatever they want out of being single casual sex mm. a few fun dates a partner a marriage anything stuff like height political views photos essays all of it is right there easily sortable easily searchable mm. it's there to help people make judgments and fulfill the desires and as fascinating as those judgments and desires may be to pick apart there's a side of it that one so there's a side of it that i think does love a disservice people make choices from the information we provide because they can not because they necessarily should so i can't think of the many people getting turned down because of some perceived deal breaker that actually no one cares about and wonder if the internet has changed romance in the way it's changed so much else mm. and for the same reason if i may channel my my inner anti is it jaeger online you can always get what you want but what you need it's a much harder thing to end mm. well we, we make so many flash judgments quick judgments on people's virtual digital profile you go look at their if i've met if i'm trying to get to know someone i'll look them up on facebook go what are your interests oh you like that movie you like that uh that celebrity that politician that book you go oh i'm making flash judge quick judgments on all these ancillary topics and at you're forgetting that there's a actual living breathing person who actually might have very a very interesting life story a very interesting life experiences things that they bring that they are bringing up bring into your world mm. and if you're making those flash judgments on hair color height uh job salary photo and you're just going no nope, skip 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 you're you're missing something you're missing out on something yeah all right yeah. so what is the solution or what's the thing that's un underlying a problem? I think it's, you know what, these dating apps are designed to, well, how you should use it is mm. to give yourself a chance to meet up with a person. That is, you know, I, I think to even form that good judgment, that opinion is not through these text messages, but, you know, try to get, I think is, is try to get two dates. Yeah. The first harmless coffee, first impressions kind of thing. Mm. So that you, your fears are, subside and then the other one i think is to see them under stress because you know we all have masks mm. and then after a while we they drop the mask because of stress yeah and then then you can sort of see the real person underneath mm. it um i think you need to move away from being a pen pal and to going face to face um stop en engaging in fatiguing co chat conversations mm. and range the meet up mm. oh, and, and it was what was it that um some of the greatest fears in, in dating is it like um, women, women are, f are afraid of serial killers meeting online? <laughs> so you know what? Just meet up in a shopping center, meet up in a public place. Um, that way they won't be able to, you know, kill you there. <laughs> um, what else? There is that. Seeing the whole person in person. So you can't judge, you can't develop good judgment on a person mm -hmm. just through text. We talked about the communication yeah. rule. Yeah. Um, you need to rack up those hours. Uh, to you know develop from a casual acquaintance mm. to best friend yeah but don't force it but it develops over time right yeah. uh, so you, you you're not going to instantly feel the the, the, the rush of chemicals that the romance chemicals pretty much immediately after one or two dates no. it's like that's how it doesn't happen all the time so yeah yeah uh so i think you know we are we are human con contradictions mm. what, what we say we want is very different from mm what we actually what we actually want. need but yeah what we need because yeah. you know, the, the crazy blind date experiment that yeah okay cupid they showed that mm. uh, yeah and you know I'll, I'll read off with uh, a study 
mm. with um, I'll finish off with a study. Mm. It's called Online Dating: A Critical Analysis from the Perspective of Psychological Science, 2012, by yeah. Finkel, Eastwick, Carney, Reese, and Spreacher. And mm. Finkel is the same guy we talked about, the Maslow's Mountain. Yeah, that's the same guy. He goes regarding access, it can be difficult to learn about potential partners from their profiles. Not only is modest misrepresentation widespread, but people seem to lack the ability to determine from a profile which potential partners will be especially compatible with them once they meet in person. In addition, the process of browsing profiles side by side is likely to cause users to overweight the features of potential partners that are easily that are easy to evaluate through profiles, but might be largely irre- irrelevant once a relationship starts to develop. Side by side browsing is likely to induce an assessment mindset, causing users to commoditize potential partners. Mm. Furthermore, many sites provide users with a lot, very large number of profiles, causing them to use time, time efficient but minimally thoughtful strategies for choosing among them and potentially reducing their willingness to commit to any one partner. Moreover, many of these sites allow users to make unlimited selections, contacting hundreds of potential partners, which can cheapen the value of being contacted and overwhelm the most desirable potential partners. Thus, although offering users a chance to consider a great many potential partners in a simple, easy to use and safe format may provide valuable opportunities at little cost, our analysis suggests that current practices are likely to reduce the value that users receive from their participation. Mm. So here he's saying is that, you know, you can have the the best app, but it's the person who's making these strategies of determining what's the best person for them. Yeah. That is likely to make the mistake here. Mm. Anyway, I, I, you know what? I was going to ask you uh, a few things, you know, what was something that you found was the most relatable when we're going through all these studies and and this uh, discussion that we have well through this conversation we've obviously spoken about a lot of the negative aspects that are associated to online dating and even to this day i have a very dim view of it which is for me highly ironic because it i somehow used online dating to actually make it work yeah so having met having met someone and married someone that i met i met through the through the internet which is again i go that's a really highly ironic story for me because i used to bag on online dating to no end and honestly still do because i'm looking at it i'm looking i think i'm looking at it from a through a critical lens going there's a lot of problems here yeah and at the end of the day the, pro- the problem is that these are like the relationships more often than not were shallow the one the one turning point for me though was turning it on its head and going okay what's what's the purpose of being here is it just to have these casual chats, casual interactions, or go in, go in looking for some, looking for purpose, looking for some something to get out of the online dating experience, and using it for its actual, what I saw its actual purpose being, which was to meet someone and meet someone face to face, setting those like setting those expectations up, while you do get knocked back time and time again. The whole the whole system is not designed to work. I don't think, though. I can't, I come back to that point. So I think I don't I don't I don't think that it's it might be good to try. It might be good to get to well. They might the apps might be useful to get conversations started, but on the whole, they're not designed to go any further than that. No. So at the end of the day, we've tried to use technology to interfere in something that really. It shouldn't be in, it shouldn't be here it should it shouldn't be in the relationship building space yeah well i think it's because people treat it as the relationship tool the, their primary tool yeah but it is only just one of many tools yeah and eventually you still need to go back to you know human social skills or yeah stuff. Meet, 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 meeting with people face to face in the real world yeah the only reason why it's so popular now is that you know it opens oh. up a whole bunch of market around your area which you, which you would never meet right normally yeah. well and people are just generally time poor oh absolutely like well uh my now wife and i we, we were living on two opposite ends of the city yeah so go figure but and again i i know that it's, it's interesting because i'm well it's, a, it's in a sense hypocritical because i'm i'm bagging on the negatives of this technology, which I, and I still, I still think that there's a lot of negatives and things that we need to sort out with this, with using this technology to replace 
building relationships, but somehow I actually managed to get it get it to work for me. So, mm. but to, to to this day, I've got no idea how I ma- how I managed to get that to happen. So. Thank you for listening to this episode about online dating. I think that from today's episode, we see that online dating has pros and cons. How effective it's used depends on the user themselves. It requires some effort to create an engaging online conversation, but that is only a means to meet face to face, which is where the real relationship starts. We can't get all our needs met through text messaging since words are only a very small percentage of communication. We need to be bold and take a risk at meeting people even if they don't meet every criteria. As Finko and Rada point out, there is so much information on the application, but it's the human that makes the judgment. However, humans can often make bad decisions. I still present caution to using these applications because they're only there to monetize use. And if it's free, that that means you're not the customer. Finally, I think being intentional with what you want from these applications will help you with success. Don't treat the person on the other line like a commodity or product to serve you. Be clear with what you want and communicate it. And that's all for today. You can reach us at thefireinadesert at gmail.com or Twitter at fireinadesert. Music is out Foxing the Fox by Kevin McLeod at www.incontact.com. Please share and like this episode so it motivates me to make more content for you guys. And thank you for listening to The Fire in the Desert, conversations about life, culture and society.